books I used to like to read when I was a child was Aesop's Fables. So today I would like to talk about Aesop. Now Aesop was supposed to be a slave and a storyteller and he was believed to have lived in ancient Greece between 620 and 564 BC. His stories have many characters, the big bad wolf, the hare, the honest woodcutter, the north wind and of course the one we always remember, the tortoise and the hare. Now this is Aesop's most famous fable about a race between a tortoise and a hare and I'm going to read it today. Now this book is the Usborne Illustrated Stories from Aesop. It's a very colourful book. It was a blustery March day, with a wild wind whooshing through the trees, shaking down the daffodils and scattering petals here, there and everywhere. The hare stood for a moment on the hill, and then, just for the fun of it, he was off, racing across the field, thumping and leaping, and as fast and as wild as the wind itself. At the edge of the field, by a sandy path, a group of animals stood watching as he bounded towards them. Oh, hare, murmured Mole, how quickly you run. So swift, cried the vole. So graceful, sang the squirrel. If only I could run as fast as you, added Mo, admiringly. Hare puffed himself out and looked extremely proud. It's true, he said, frisking about on the spot. No one is faster than me. Someone gave a dry, raspy chuckle. Who dares to laugh? snapped her. And everyone turned to see Tortoise creeping his way towards them, ancient and scaly and slow. You could never beat me, said her, his whiskers twitching in irritation. I could try, said Tortoise. There was a stunned silence, and Hare gasped. Well then, you're on, he said at last. I'll see you here in this exact spot next Tuesday. That should give you time to train. After all, I want to give you a chance. We'll race across the field and back. Tortoise shook his wrinkled head. Let's make the race longer, he suggested. We could go through those woods, along the winding river, all the way to the great oak tree on the hill. Ha, said Hare, I'll leave you for dust. See you later, slow coach. And with a flick of his back legs, Hare was off through the long grass. Here one moment gone the next. The other animals looked at Tortoise pityingly. Poor old thing, they murmured. What was he thinking? They shook their heads at him. Just you wait, said Tortoise. Just you wait and see. The day of the race dawned. It was sunny and warm and all the woodland animals had come out to watch crowding round the starting line. The birds chirped excitedly from their branches, while young rabbits and squirrels squeaked and squealed as they squeezed their way to the front to get a better view. Tortoise waited patiently for the race to begin, but Hare couldn't help performing for the crowd. He jumped and twirled in the air, springing up and down, showing off with glee. An owl stood before them, one wing raised in the air, 
I'll start the countdown, she hooted over the commotion. As soon as I lower my wing, the race can begin. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All the animals joined in the chant, and as Owl lowered her wing, hair shot off in a cloud of dancing dust. Tortoise crept forward a few paces, stopped, coughed, and crept on. Come on, Tortoise, everyone shouted, feeling sorry for him. By now, hair was more no more than a black dot in the distance, bounding away to the woods. Oh, I'm going to win, oh yes, I'm going to win, Hare sang to himself as he leaped along the path. The breeze rippled through his fair, and as he ran, he felt at one with the woods and the wind and the song of spring. He felt it urging him on and on. Ahead lay the winding river, and just beyond the brow of the hill, there was the great oak tree. Hare looked back through the woods, but there was no sign of tortoise. Oh, this isn't really a race at all, he huffled. Tortoise doesn't stand a chance. Where's the fun in that? Hare stopped running and looked along by the river for a while, lazily sniffing the fresh spring air. Drinking in the scent of the river and the wildflowers, he yawned and stretched. Perhaps, thought Hare, I should have a little nap. After all, tortoise will be hours and hours. Then at least I can race them to the finish line. So Hare found a soft, warm spot beside the path. Closed his eyes and drifted off into a pleasant doze. And as he dozed, he dreamed of all the races he had ever won and all the ones he was going to win. Meanwhile, Tortoise plodded on. It was slow work carrying his heavy shell, but he kept moving his stumpy legs one in front of the other. By the time he left the woods, it was afternoon, and the sun was slipping down behind the trees. As he made his way along the winding river, the light began to fade. A glorious sunset streaked across the sky. Come on, tortoise, shouted the animals at the finishing line. You can do it. You can win. The tortoise allowed himself the glimmer of a smile, bent his head and heaved himself up the hill. I don't understand, said the moles. Where's Hare? Whatever could have happened to him? Who knows, squeaked the mice. We want Tortoise to win. Look how hard he's trying. And they squealed in excitement, urging Tortoise on. The noise drifted down the hill to Hare's ears. They twitched. He opened his eyes, leaped up and looked around. Oh no, he cried. It's nearly night. I've been asleep all this time. The race, the race. He set off for the finishing line and saw to his horror the tortoise was nearly there. Oh no, cried Hare. He can't win. This can't be happening. Hare ran faster than he'd ever run in his life. Bounding up the hill, he raced after tortoise determined to beat him. Slowly, slowly, Tortoise inched towards the finishing line. The air was filled with yells of nearly there, Tortoise, and you can do it, Hare. I can't believe it, tweeted the birds. Oh, Tortoise might actually win. His breath coming in great pants, Hare made leap after leap. He stretched out his front paws, flattened his back and flew through the air. But he was too late. Tortoise was already plodding, slowly but surely, over the finishing line. 
there was a moment of stunned silence. Then the animals cheered and danced and crowded round Tortoise, patting him on his shell and whooping for joy. Who would have thought it? What a day! Tortoise beat the hare. And the moral of this story that Aesop wrote was slow and steady wins the race. Now all Aesop's fables have a moral. The fables number 725. And they were originally told from person to person. As much for entertainment as well as for largely for teaching and relaying a moral lesson. Aesop told many tales about animals, all illustrating human virtues and, of course, human failings. However, many people feel that some of them were written by several people, just with Aesop being the most famous of them all. And Aesop used animals to help fictionalise and lighten the stories, to make the moral point without boring or insulting those who were reading them, or indeed listening to him. And this, these stories are enjoyed by everyone throughout the ages. So Aesop's idea of telling a moral tale through animals works. Now we really do not know for sure whether Aesop was a real person. There is an Aesop who lived from 620 to 560 BCE and he was born a slave and he was freed because he was considered to be literate and intelligent. However, this is shrouded in mystery and we cannot really know for sure. Did he indeed write every single fable all those years ago or did others add to them? after his death. But we all do know how much we enjoy his fables and all the other stories that he wrote with a moral ending. They do indeed have much to tell us all in the world we now live in today.